Hey there, quirky people. I am your host, Anna, and with the new Black Panther Fever, we will be looking at all the Black Panthers who have existed so far. As you're aware already, the Black Panther is a mantle passed from a warrior to a warrior across generations. So, there have obviously been plenty of Black Panthers throughout history. But this video won't just feature the Black Panthers spotted in the MCU. We're gonna look at some surprising names from the comics who have also worn the Black Panther suits. But before we get to those, I'd love it if you guys would perform that two-click combo to support our channel. Having said that, first let's look at all the Black Panthers within the MCU so far. Then we'll move to the surprising ones from the comics. But if you want to jump to the comics straight away, then you could start from this timestamp. Okay, so in the MCU, the first one to become the protector of Wakanda was Bashenga. First Black Panther, the protector of Wakanda. Back when all tribes of Wakanda were divided, it was this warrior shaman from the lore who united all the tribes. After having a vision of the goddess Bast, he was led to a powerful herb that had grown out of a vibranium-rich soil. Upon the instruction of Bast, he consumed the herb and became a superhuman. He was the first king of Wakanda, and he also became the first Black Panther. After his demise, his descendants of the Golden Tribe continued to take on the Black Panther mantle. These were all the Black Panthers that followed him until the late 1990s, where this mantle was held by Beishenga's descendant, King Azuri. He was the father of T'Chaka and Njobu. In the comics, he was the Black Panther during World War II and even fought Captain America over a misunderstanding. But in the MCU, he ruled over Wakanda and held the mantle of Black Panther till the 1980s. T'Chaka and his younger brother Njobu received their father's two royal rings. And then, the younger brother Njobu went on to join the War Dogs to help people of color across the world. And the Black Panther mantle was passed down to T'Chaka. King T'Chaka got to live a pretty long life. Wakanda prospered under his rulership because of the hard decisions he took to keep the secrets of the country intact. But he had to pay the heavy price of killing his own brother Njobu after finding out that he betrayed his own country. And things became even worse when he left little Eric Stevens, aka Njidaka, back there all alone. He was a good king who prepared his son really well. But this decision of not taking his helpless nephew back to Wakanda was the biggest mistake of his life. And the price of his blunder had to be paid by the next Black Panther in line. T'Challa. He took the mantle of Black Panther from his father way before his demise. But he only became king after his Baba died because of Baron Zemo's conniving schemes. Initially, he was consumed by vengeance as he went after the killer of his father. But in a very short span of time, he grew and became much better as a human being by making Zemo atone for his sins instead of killing him. The living are not done with you yet. Then, he saw the wrong in not sharing Wakanda's resources with the rest of the world. Ultimately, he proved to be the noblest king of Wakanda and also dedicated his resources to defend Earth against Thanos. And then he died silently because of an undisclosed disease. But before that, he faced a huge setback against another Black Panther and Jadaka. Njobu's son trained his entire life to avenge his father and take over Wakanda. Ultimately, he did exactly that and proved to be one of the greatest antagonists in the MCU. We could really relate to his emotions. He took Wakanda's throne and even wore a new golden Black Panther suit. But the hatred in his heart turned him cruel. No! Your heart is so full of hatred, you are not fit to be a king! He didn't want to stop at Wakanda. He wanted to take over the world and really become an oppressor. And thankfully for everyone, M'Baku saved T'Challa and helped him reclaim his throne. Then after T'Challa, everyone thought that the Black Panther was gone. But the Black Panther still lives in Shuri. Let me give you a spoiler warning before I talk about her character. I will spoil the events of Wakanda Forever here, so skip this point if you don't want to know. It's safe to say that Shuri has proven to be the smartest person alive on Earth. And that's why she was the only one who could recreate the heart-shaped herb. She couldn't save her brother, and then her mother died. So being the only royal left alive, the responsibility of the entire nation fell upon her shoulders. And in the need of the hour, she really came good. Consumed with rage, she was battling her inner demons and wanted to burn the world. But she felt empathy towards the people of Talokan. So she allowed Namor to yield and stop an eternal war from happening. Now she is set to continue as the new Black Panther, and that puts a halt to all the Black Panthers in the MCU. Maybe we could see a few other variants in Avengers Secret Wars. But before that, let's look at all the characters that surprised us by taking on the mantle of Wakanda's protector in the comics. There are quite a few names, so we're going to keep our pace fast from here on out. First up, let's talk about Black Panther 1 million BC. 
While Bashanga was considered to be the first Black Panther within the MCU, the Marvel Legacy comic issue number one, which came out in 2017, introduced another Black Panther of 1 million BC. His name wasn't known, but he was called the earliest version of Black Panther. He was a man wearing panther skins and worked with the Stone Age Avengers to save the world a million years ago. He and the Stone Age Avengers actually fought a celestial called Fallen. Next up, we've got Kashamba. We've discussed a Black Panther from a million years ago. Well, Kashamba is the one that existed in the distant future. He is not a descendant of T'Challa or anyone from the royal family, as they have all died long before him. During this era of the future, Wakanda isn't even ruled by a king. Instead, a council of people ruled the advanced nation. When the newest version of Doctor Doom invaded and took over Wakanda under the council's watch, it was Kashamba who wore the mask of a Black Panther and stood against him. But all that was a sham, as there was a twist in the tale. Apparently, Kashamba was a follower of Doctor Doom, and because of that, the future of Wakanda was doomed. Next up, we've got the name of T'Challa's wife, Aurora Monroe. Yes, the X-Men mutant Storm also became Black Panther on one instance. But it wasn't the Storm of Earth-616 that we're all familiar with. Instead, the Storm was a variant that existed on Earth-161. Usually, we've seen her spend a lot of time around Wakanda as T'Challa's wife. But on this Earth, her essence got separated into two entities. One was nearly made out of pure energy, so to contain her, she had to be held together by a Black Panther suit. Hence, one of those Auroros technically became a Black Panther, who actually called herself Ghost Panther. The next surprising entry on this list is of Venom. In the past, we did a video about the different Marvel characters who hosted the Venom symbiote, but Black Panther was not included in that list as there were other popular characters involved. But she is totally relevant here. In an alternate universe, a young woman from Nigeria called Ngozi was an avid insect collector. She lost the ability to use her legs after a bus accident. But once upon a time, she tried to catch a grasshopper and came across the Venom symbiote instead. It didn't latch onto her right away, but a villain called Rhino was causing all sorts of chaos in her country. So, Ngozi convinced the symbiote to bond with her. Venom obviously allowed her to use her legs again and then she defeated Rhino. After that, she joined the Dora Milaje and even became the successor of T'Challa's Black Panther mantle. Next up, we also have a scroll on the list and it's none other than Queen Baranke. In the comics, a second civil war event happened in an alternate reality. Here, Black Panther almost died while trying to activate a prison self-destruct sequence. And it was Queen Veronke who took his place as Black Panther. Her goal was to take over Earth. So, she kept the civil war going for a long period of time until she could get her hands on Wakanda's resources. Now for the final member on this list, we've got Captain America. In the Ultimates universe, the origin of T'Challa was very different. After being in an injury, T'Challa was enrolled in the Weapon X program. And then, Captain America trained him to become a hero. He ultimately became the Black Panther, and Captain America asked him to join the Ultimates team. But it had been way too long since T'Challa had went back to Wakanda. So for a short while, Cap secretly took the mantle of Black Panther while T'Challa could visit his home. Okay, that's all from our list of characters who has been Black Panther so far. Which of them did you like besides T'Challa? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Goodbye, and I'll see you in the next one.